This is undoubtedly one of the most unexpected releases of all time. Yeah, I'm gonna go that far because I didn't even discover that he existed in Cars 2 until just a year ago when I was creating a bunch of trivia quizzes for my Cars community for a giveaway. And during that process, I was scouring all Cars media, all the movies, shorts, whatever, to come up with the most difficult questions of all time. Now, I guess this actually renders that quiz inaccurate because when I saw this guy in the movie and I saw, holy crap. He has the Verne's taxi decals. He has the Verne's head bar there on the top. This must be Verne. I mean, it's the same kind of model sedan, right? Almost, kind of. I mean, we only get a back look at him in the movie. But I thought, okay, Verne, it's been like five years since we last saw Verne in Cars 1. He must have gotten a new paint job. And so I put in the quiz... Which of these characters has appeared in multiple Cars films? And I slipped Vern in there and just absolutely mind screwed everyone. People were mad at me. Kind of became a meme that Vern's going to rail you just because of how sneaky he is. So I'm sorry, everyone. This obviously now is not Vern, but Redney Criante. He is now evidently an employee for Vern's taxi company. Now we're going to whip out Vern's bio in the Meet the Cars book because I feel like there's something a little contradictory in it, but we'll get to that in a little bit here. And yeah, guys, this comes out of 2022 Singles Case J, which is just now being found across the United States at Walmart stores. However, as you guys should know by now, because it's at Walmart, they have reduced cases. There's only 12 per case instead of 24, which means the contents get a little wonky. So instead of having the full bore with Bertha Bollard's Wagon and Dana Crankoff in the case, those two are absent. But fortunately, there is still Revney, which actually kind of you know, really, really sucks when you think about it because those are the new releases, Bertha and Dana, and they aren't even in the case. It doesn't make any sense for Walmart to receive these shorter, smaller cases and chop off a bunch of the good releases. And they've done that before. You know, I don't think Otis was in there, case D. Jay with VR headset was, but I'm not confident that all the new releases have been even available at Walmart. It's just super weird to think about, but yeah, guys. Hopefully they show up the 24 count cases at Target stores here in the United States as well. Outside the US though, they are being found in Italy and Greece, which are kind of odd places. No offense to those people, but it's just odd, you know, for the case to pop up there first. Like legit, this case was found a month ago in Greece and it just kind of stayed a Greece exclusive for a while. And that's actually where I got this one from. Actually, no. Oh my gosh. Oh man, I'm silly. Sorry, excuse me. I did buy some from Greece, but this one is one of the USA Walmart finds from a California seller because, you know, I don't go out hunting much. And when I do, it's usually unsuccessful. So I decided to save myself gas and, you know, just get it, get it, you know, make sure I get something concrete in my hand instead of just, you know, oh, aimlessly walking around Walmart for five hours of my day. But yeah, I love this release. Like I said, unexpected. It was unexpected that they even put Vern's taxi back into the movie. I mean, obviously, you know, it was great to see Vern here <laughs> in Cars 1, right? I mean, no shame, no shade to the original Vern, but I don't know. It's just odd that, you know, that is one of the tropes. That is like one of the things that they carried on over the Cars 2. It's like a little Easter egg. Now, as far as we know, there is no Vern Taxi in Cars 3, which kind of stinks because it breaks, you know, the lineage there. I don't know why. I don't know. There's a lot of breaking of lineages in Cars 3, like no Kachow for McQueen, no Van and Minnie, no Me and Tia. So a lot of disappointments just to keep it at that. I feel like I'm rambling a lot about Revney here, but there's just so much to talk about and he's such a great release. But yeah, he's looking good, you know, on the Red Riders packaging there. Love his expression. Mine has like a little weird black booger right there. Like I hope that comes off. But yeah, it's just been kind of chilling in there. Hopefully I could just shake it off. On the back here, they do get the movie right, which I really commend them for doing since he is such an obscure background character, which I will show him in the movie and we'll talk more about that later. But yeah, as seen in Cars 2, Chisaki, Artist Ramon, or as they call him now, Ramon Green, Shara, Francesco Bernoulli, Otis, Lewis Hamilton, and Sarge are all featured on the back of the package, 
all of which were released by now. We're kind of narrowing in on the end of, oh man, hold on one second. We are narrowing in on the end of the main line in terms of cars one, two, and three stuff. And there's going to be a lot of on the road stuff coming in the main line here. Whereas, you know, the regular stuff will just kind of be reissues from previous cases, if you guys know what I'm saying. Now, I'm trying to find Vern's bio here in the Meet the Cars book, but he might have gotten chopped off from the like newest version, which really would suck. Let me go to the index here. That would be most wise, Disney Docket. Most wise. Sure enough, he did. <laughs> All right, you know, I'm just going to chat with you guys while I look for my other book here. You know, I have all the books kind of chilling nearby, so this shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, there it is. I see it. I see it. I see it. All right, Vern better be in this one. Or maybe he's not even in these books at all. Maybe I'm just going on a wild goose chase. Maybe he is actually just from the Cars Blu-ray Finder game. Hmm. Probably is. I'm just making a fool of myself. That would be pretty typical. Why isn't there even an index in this one? That kind of is weird. All right, yeah, wow, that was embarrassing. All right, I guess <laughs> there is no Vern's bio in the Meet the Cars books at all. So excuse me, guys. I'm sorry about that. Sorry for wasting some of your time there. But we're going to keep it in there because it's kind of funny. And I will put... Vern's bio here on the screen from the Cars Finder Blu-ray game, which is where it must have originated from. But I'm pretty sure it says that he's the sole like employee, he's like the sole owner of the company, which is why when I saw, you know, like this angle from Cars 2, I was like, well, that has to be Vern, you know, because it says he's the only employee for Vern's taxi company. And now clearly that has been debunked. Maybe he's expanded. Well, clearly he must have in order to employ Revney here. But we need to open this guy up and then we'll talk about some more stuff later. So thankfully that black little bugger on his hood just wiped right on off. I don't know how that got in there or what that really was, but I'm glad it's gone. There is Revney Griante in the movie. Again, we only get to see a back view of him, just like we only get to see a back view of Vern in Cars 1, which is a pretty cool parallel. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but worked out. And he's actually chilling right next to Colin Bowrev, who will be the new release in the next case, Case K. And Case K is the first case that will feature some on-the-road Cars as well, so I guess he's not really the only new release, but he's the only new release from Cars 1, 2, or 3. Now, he's not the same model as Vern, despite looking quite similar and both being sedans. He's actually the same model as none other than Gen Tan Sedan, who's become quite popular in terms of repaints over the last couple years here. Now, actually, Sarah Wilson is different from her, and so I will retract that. I just brought her out because she is very similar. But, you know, Dana Crankoff, who's the other or one of the other new characters in this case with Revney, shares the model as well. So to think that there's two like repaints of the same model, two different characters in the same case is a little unsettling. Like, I'm not a huge fan of that, that they were like, okay. Here are two cars from, well, we got one from Cars 2, we got Dana Crankoff from Cars 3. They both share the same model for the most part, so yeah, just make them toss them in the case there. Granted, Revney's a super unique one, and you know, I never thought that they would release this guy. He's such a cool Easter egg, but I am more than happy they did. So glad that they're giving Cars 2 some attention. I mean, they've been giving Cars 1 and Cars 2 the majority of the attention in 2022 you know we've not gotten as many next gens or cars 3 veteran racers or the retro racers and i know there haven't been many new releases at all but you know we got keith Cohn, we got damage the king back and we got of course here revney colin Borev coming up so a lot of good stuff that has really made me excited you know and very nostalgic actually to just you know reflect upon the stuff that is still out there, you know, a lot of potential from those first two movies that they've yet to really tap into. 
Now, I think one of the best aspects to Revni here is his expression. You know, as a lot of expressions do, they just, you know, are pretty robotic. You know, you're just looking straight ahead, straight ahead, even Vern, straight ahead. No, Revni, he is looking off to his right, which is awesome. Adds so much personality. I mean, you guys have no idea. I mean, maybe you do, but to just position the eyes a little bit off to one side or the other, it gives eons more of a personality to the car than if you know, you're know you just robotic staring straight off into space. Now the mouth is also great because it really does match how his eyes are looking, just kind of a little bit of a shock expression. Not really upset or anything, but just kind of surprised. He's just like, what's going on over there, you know? Is that somebody I could pick up? Uh, and yeah, we're not going to get into how taxis work in the Cars universe because yeah, that's a rabbit hole we don't want to go down. Do cars actually get into them? Yeah, no, we're not going to even answer. I ain't even going to try to answer that monstrously tough question. You guys can duke it out in the comment section below. But yeah, he's got a nice grill here. Again, this is all just Pixar sending them the art and Mattel copying it because he's not in the movie, so there's nothing to go off of in terms of the front. Nice rims here, just typical silver hubcaps there, which quite shiny actually. Vern's Taxi, now this is where we get a look at the new logo here. So it's got a blue background. And we have the number, which has been added, 9388885. Of course, they don't put the area code on there, just assuming that you know, you know the area code from wherever you are currently located. Saves them on some graphics work. So before it just was Vern's taxi and there was no number to call. So that's kind of interesting that they added that. When I, actually I didn't say this before I wanted to, but I asked Jim Scavenger a year ago to make this custom because I thought it would just be a repaint of Vern, slap this decal on the side and everything and bam, you're done, right? So first of all, I'm you know, happy that he didn't end up doing that one. He just didn't end up having the time for it, but <laughs> Mattel ended up releasing him anyway. So I don't know, maybe Mattel's secretly watching me because legit guys, I asked Jim Scavenger to make a custom of this last year. So that's pretty wild that, you know, here we are 365 days later and I have the actual diecast. Like that is pretty cool. But yeah, I did not think that they added the number there. So it would have been inaccurate anyways if I had to make the custom. He still has the Vern head bar, light bar, whatever up on the top, but this time it's a plastic piece that protrudes from the main metal body. Whereas with Vern, regular Vern, daddy Vern, it is part of the metal body there. Now they did do a lenticular version of Vern, but I hate the lenticulars and I'm not even going to show it. It's so bad. Vern was released in 2010 and 2013. But we haven't seen him for nine years. Surprising too, because they've released Donna Pitts, Fred, who else? Who else? Jonathan Wrenchworth. And those were always on the same kind of path. Like Donna, Jonathan, and Vern were all released in 2010, all released in 2013. But then Vern vanished, but the other two were released in 2016 and now in 2022. So. Maybe you just think of Revney as Vern's replacement, so Vern only truly missed 2016. Maybe you can think of it like that. All right, let's move on. I love the pure white color on this guy. You don't really get too many pure white models, even though we're looking at Tom Tock there, but that's a rare exception, literally a very rare car to find. Now his license plate is unique. I was very worried about what kind of license plate they'd smack on him just because you know Mattel has a tendency to just duplicate license plates off other cars, especially if they're the same model. So thankfully, he differs from Gen Tan Stan's model here quite a bit. It is 9-03HJ. I do not know the significance of HJ, but you know the 903 is probably September 3rd. And I can't read the text above it. It's pretty blurry. Thanks, Thailand. But this decal is pretty good, and so is the plastic insert there. Eyes look really solid as well, like I commented on. 
man, I would love, I would die, I would pay to know the significance of some of these license plates because there's been a ton. Like, I mean, every time we get a new character, I mean, there's almost always a new license plate now. So they've really worked on correcting there, you know. Everyone has the Fishbowl license plate. Everyone has the MJ115 license plate. I mean, legit, so many cars had both of those license plates. So I'm glad they're working on that. But so now I just want to know what all these mean, right? Would really be cool. Now his base is pretty typical here, made in Thailand. R18A means he was made during the 18th week of 2022 at the A factory. Gorgeous car here. Gorgeous. So yeah, a little bit closer comparison here with Gen Tan sedan. Technically, they are different models if you actually want to get technical about it because Revney has the insert for the light bar up there. Their rims are different. Different shape, not just color. But yeah, I would not be surprised if this Dana Crankoff model gets used quite a bit over the next few years. I mean, like I said, I should have said Gen Tanzania model because yeah, Dana Crankoff is, again, another new car in the case here with Revney that is not available at Walmart, but is in the full 24 count case. And so yeah, that's the same model as them as well. Sarah Wilson came close, you know, as I was talking about, I really thought, you know, when I first glanced at her, oh yeah, that's gotta be the same model. And then I was like, wait a second, it would feel really wrong if Dana Crankoff was just like a straight up repaint of her with just a different camera. But then I remembered back to my Sarah Wilson review and I remember commenting, on how grateful I was that Sarah is actually a unique model. And if anything, she's more similar to like Skip Richter from way, way back in the day. Another 2010 release. Looks like my Revney might have a chip right there, which kind of sucks. Uh, maybe. I don't know what that little glob is right there. But yeah. Sarah is just a little shorter. Different backs. different sides and everything as well. Now comparing him a little bit closer to Vern. Vern is thinner and longer. And yeah, take a look in the movie. This guy does look to be a little bit of a different model than Vern. Even though, you know, at first you think, oh, it's just, you know, a typical sedan, very typical sedan. They have to be the same model. But no, that's actually not the case. And so if I did a little more thorough, thorough examination, I probably would have realized that that can't be Vern just with a new paint job. But I really wanted to think it was. I think that would have been so cool if you know it was canon that Vern actually appeared again in Cars 2, like a recurring character, kind of like Todd the Pizza Planet truck, just you know, not as iconic, right? But just kind of within the Cars universe, their own Todd the Pizza Plant truck. And so, you know, if, you know, they could have totally just repainted Vern and called him Vern just in white, and I would have been exuberant, and I would have believed it too. So yeah, guys, that is pretty much it for the comparisons. You know, I guess we can show Chauncey Ferris here and Bob Pulley, two other taxis, his rivals from Cars 2. Who's the best taxi from Cars 2? Is it Chauncey, Bob, or the newcomer Revney here. Now Revney is actually named after Pixar employee Rodney Grillante, Griante, something like that. I know it's Rodney Gravante, maybe, I don't know. This is one of the odd occurrences where both the first and last name are carified, which is just like wild, like Rev and then Grill. Whereas, you know, like you got Sarah Wilson, Jen Tanzan, Bob Pulley, like only one of their names is Carify, but with Revney, you just get the full shebang, you know, they just couldn't resist having, you know, the easy opportunity to Carify both. But yeah, guys, let me know who is the best taxi in Cars 2. I did do some customs Why I commissioned somebody to do customs of other taxis in Cars 2. If you guys remember, there was a repaint of both of these. You get, who was it, Harry Checker? No, 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 no. It was Charles Drunged, and the other one was Sunjin Go. So yeah, both of those were reviewed on my channel as well. 
so weird to think I'm gonna have to display this guy with like Otis and Tom Tock and the Radiator Springs John Lasseter. Like I can't believe this. These are the boys here. This is the squad. Such an odd squad <laughs> to think about these guys being associated together. And Keith Cohn, or no, 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 Colin Borev will also end up in this squad here as well. So such an odd collective of characters. But great, great, great to see them releasing you know more of those obscure background characters from Cars 2, and they're revisiting Cars 1 as well. So I can't complain at all about the characters they're choosing to release. I just wish they'd release more of them because you know there's no denying that this year was a little slow on the new releases front. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, let me know who's your favorite taxi. And I guess the more important question truly really should be, Who's your favorite, Vern or Revney? Now, I do want to apologize. This video <laughs> might have been a little all over the place. My thoughts are a little scatterbrained right now. I don't know. I'm just, one, super excited for Revney. Two, super tired from work. And yeah, I had you know to get this video out because I was able to get him in the mail from the same seller that I got the Dots Jammin' and Revo Cost color changers from. But I, you know, obviously... Those were prioritized. Sorry, Revney, but Cars on the Road is going to be a big deal over the next few months here. All right, enough rambling. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.